before I introduce, reintroduce our guest speaker, uh, I do want to mention that we are passing the virtual basket, and our uh, PayPal link can be fine can be found in the chat box. So let's not forget that. Uh, so I'd like to turn it over to the sharpest dressed man on Zoom, Dr. Dito. Can't hear him. Okay, now. Okay. Morning. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, recently, I found out that almost 40% of the American population is chronically ill, and that there's almost, I'd say, close to 70%. Some people have counted 80 that were obese or nearly obese. And I kind of wondered why. This has been going on for some time. Why haven't we woken up? So um, some time back, I created a website called Seeds for Change. And um, what it encompasses is your spirit, your emotions, your exercise, your diet, and sunshine. These were the five songs of creation that I've used to create my life over about the last 20 some years. Um, these have been a very important part of my existence since I'd say that I have really, really had a very amazing lifetime. Sometimes I feel like I've done five or six lifetimes in one, but uh, I came to the point where I realized that I had to restore myself or die. It got to the point where I had to pick myself up off the ground and figure out what the heck is going on. So um, I decided that what I would do with the help of a bunch of different friends that I kind of synchronistically bumped into along the trail, uh, Native American and others, uh, some were hippies, some were just amazing people that just came out of nowhere, chiropractors, other people when I needed them, and they were all natural. So um, I'm going to introduce myself. Um, I am an herbalist, um, a natural health guide, a counselor, and a peacekeeper of Native American traditions. Now I'm reading this off my website, so I'd like you to go to dito4u.com with a four in there. And you will be able to enter that, and there are little tabs across the top, which will take you to all of the things that you would like to probably know about uh, spirit. These are the seeds for change. Spirit, emotions, exercise, diet, and sunshine. There are also tabs for home remedies, how to get your pH level up and keep it there. Also on chaparral, how to collect it, how to use it, why it's so important. In mesquite, another natural food and medicine from the, from the local Indians of Arizona and beyond. Also goes into resources, contacts, and even rosemary and other herbs that are quite good for your memory and for your well-being. And Kimberly to put their slides. So Kimberly, would you like to start with slide one? Okay, and I'm also a graduate of Silver Mind Control and Hannah Kroger's Help One Another Natural Diet and Medicines curriculum. Um, I'm also an ongoing student of Subtle Earth Energies and Cosmic Forces of the Sensar Learning Center in Sedona. And I'm currently residing in Jerome and in Cottonwood with Coquita. I also do local herb walks and workshops, and we will probably be doing dousing. I'm a pendulum dowser, part of the Southwestern Dowsing Association, and we'll probably also go on herb walks and talks as well. So these will be coming up um, in other workshops on how to create mesquite and prickly pear uh, drinks and foods. So let's get on to seeds for change. The first one. The first one, sunshine. 
Oh. Well, first of all, Seeds for Change is a guide to wellness and reclaiming your inner child that you may have lost along the path. As a child, you were likely intuitive and saw everything as something to play with and to explore. So let go of your list of adult things to do, lighten your load and look closely at what you really want to do. And then start allowing yourself to do these things. Regaining your youth is the first step. That includes reversing your degrading body, releasing your fears and changing your dreams. If you are where you thought you should be and find there is nothing for you there, then you may be open to a more natural way of experiencing life, a new reality. Okay, spirit, let's move to the next slide. Okay, you are God in form, here to express and to experience love. Every life is a gift from and to spirit. We are love on a quest to find itself. And this comes with the self-realization of our oneness with all life. We were meant to be symbiotic and in harmony with life, not its master or its competitor. Our earth is being touched by the cosmic hand again, and perhaps it is part of the new age of compassion, Christ consciousness. It feels so compelling and so marvelous and so appropriate in some ways. Yet many may, may not wake up. They may leave their bodies from dis-ease and hopelessness and discordance. But appreciation for each moment is the holy grail, and it hides just in front of you in a little box with no lock and no key. Feel for it, open your heart, be in the present, the presence, the gift and the love that you truly are. This is the time of appreciation when a hero dies in the movies and on the screen, a brave heart, and we die also when we remember our oneness. And this is the time of Christ. This time, there is no doubt. We, the global family, desire the sun to set on the old world and rise from a new direction onto a world unveiled, exposed as heaven in form. Let's go on to the next slide, which is emotions. Okay. Uh, when I was first introduced to Dr. Masuro's work, I was amazed. Emoto. Emoto. Uh, that is a water crystal uh, that came from a lake in Japan that a group of people had um, intended love and compassion and appreciation. And this was a water crystal that formed from that. And you've seen his other water crystals have shown uh, from pain and other such emotions have been horribly deformed. So the water that is in your body actually carries your emotion. That's why it's important to drink water. Alkaline water is much more better than anything else. So your emotions are your creative drive and your power to deeply appreciate being alive. Come only from love or not at all. So if you spend your emotional energy complaining, you will attract more things to complain about. And on the other hand, if you spend your emotional energy creating your happiest vision of the greatest version of your big self, you will shift your life experiences to those of love, inspiration, gratitude, joy, and wonder. And I call those the five songs of creation. And if you intend those each day, you'll have a much better life. This is the law of attraction and it is verifiable reality formed by how you look at life you are what you think, and how you look at things will design the life that you get. Emotions are vibrational, with the lowest being guilt, resentment, insecurity, fear, and hate, to name a few. And these will eventually lead to physical dis-ease. So let go of negative emotions, and if need be, fake it until you make it until you have reached the levels of love that you were designed to experience. And then you can re-experience radiant health that is available to all who hold high frequencies. 
allowing you to feel positive and good on a daily basis. And if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. Remember that everything is a perception, either a drama or a comedy, and the energy you put into motion, or E plus motion, will create the reality that you perceive. Rearrange everything you do and say and all whom you interact with to embrace the positive and your emotions will improve dramatically. Remember to speak clearly, positively, and with integrity, and aspire to speak only what is true for you. And ask each day that the universe provide that which is perfect and joyful for you. And be grateful for all the things coming your way as though it were already a reality, because on one level, it is. Be mindful that what you think today creates what you will experience tomorrow. So let's go on to the next slide, which is exercise. <laughs> exercise. Well, your engine, your body needs to be run and stretched and flexed to carry oxygen and fuels to 70 plus trillion cells, I think at the last count, and to move out the gunk and the sludge and the toxins. Well, I teach a, a Tibetan form of yoga called the Tibetan Five Rites. Uh, White Wolf has been able to do all of these rites in six to eight minutes to music, which is pretty amazing for an 89-year-old lady. Um, but I remember that most of my life I have disliked exercise, especially things like running and riding bicycles. But as I got older and spent more time on, as a river guide in the Grand Canyon, I learned that loading and unloading heavy food boxes from rafts over rocky beaches to camp was physically pretty demanding. And rowing for hours against harsh winds in the hot sun was really taking its toll. However, the boatmen that were doing yoga in the morning on the beach seemed better at avoiding their tight muscles, muscles and back aches and got much more done, no matter what their age. And I also noticed that they had more enthusiasm and I wanted the same for myself. Well, while in Mexico, many years ago, probably close to 30 now, a friend spent a morning showing me a simple series of five yoga exercises developed and practiced in Tibet and in short order promised to rejuvenate and actually reverse aging. I was really impressed with that. So it could be done in only 10 minutes a day. And so I became a teacher of the Tibetan Five Rites and on my website, you can see more about that. And so let's move on to diet. Okay, the fuel determines the output and the lifespan. Uh, alcohol is only for race cars. Well, think color, eat slowly, and remember, orange, red, yellow, green equal vitamins. Remember that most of the food that we eat today is not as healthy as what our parents were eating 50 years ago. <clears throat> that farmers' roles have changed dramatically as corporations began to dictate their demands on the farmers. And as the industrial age pressed upon them, farmers got further away from planting with the moon cycles and even larger cycles, such as resting in the winter, were changed with the advent of pesticides, greenhouses, and other unnatural means of producing food were introduced. And this has greatly affected the foods that you eat. On my website, I have a raw food pyramid and some great interviews um, with Dr. Mercola, and also some recipes on how to cook rice, beans, grains, and make your own cultured vegetables. Also, I go into why, not use, why you should not use artificial sweeteners, drink Coca-Cola, and get your pH level is so low. So let's uh, go on to sunshine, the next slide. Okay, don't be afraid of the sun. The sun is good for you. Um, don't wear sunglasses. I'm gonna I'm gonna break a few rules here, but um, 
God's gift to all creation is sunshine. Uh, you need vitamin D from natural sources. It gives you clarity. Uh, if you sun gaze at low sun, either when it comes up or when it goes down or both, it actually activates your pineal gland. It actually retonifies it. Um, pineal glands are in peril right now. Um, they uh, have been congested by things such as um, pollutants. Uh, you can add a little bit of borax. Uh, Hannah Kroger called it um, the, uh, what was it? Uh, it was the, uh, it's, it's the clean cleanser. Boraxo actually is a cleanser for the pineal gland, but we'll get into that another time. So what I would like to add to this is that the sun has been receiving a bad reputation, yet people have worked in the sun all of their lives, in many cases nearly naked, yet did not get skin cancer until recently. People who live in northern high latitudes and are rarely in the sun have a high frequency of skin cancer and often in places on the body where the sun doesn't even shine. <laughs> but why is this? Well, there's a, it's important to remember that um, what, what you need to do is, is remember too this affects something called seasonal affective disorder. This is an area of concern for those suffering from depression and lethargy due to the lack of skin exposure to sunlight for long periods of time. SAD used to be associated with long winter days, however, it has been on the rise as more workers find themselves indoors with no skin exposure to sunlight for days at a time. The body does not receive what it needs to create vitamin D when the sun exposure comes through windows. So if you're indoor, as an office worker, consider rolling up your sleeves, your pant legs, and heading outside to bask in the sun during your lunch break. Okay, we are ready to go to um, grounding. Okay, with barefoot walks. Oh, I see it's part of the red painted toenail tribe. Good. <laughs> okay, I, I'm actually part of the multicolored painted toenail tribe. I believe in color therapy. Um, grounding and healing with barefoot walks, they connect you to needed negative ions. And there have been many studies on this up in um, the northern regions of uh, Canada and in Alaska, where people have recovered from maladies just by being in the sun and walking barefoot. And so, I think that's the last of the, we have one more slide, go to that. Okay, well there's never been a better time to cultivate a confidence in your own well-beingness. So to kind of, I believe that was the last slide. Um, what you want to do now is take care of yourself your God self. Remember that um, there's never been a time to cultivate such a self a confidence in your own well-beingness and that maladies are fractures in your weakened body, mind, and spirit which affect your spiritual self-confidence. So as a child of the Great Spirit, your innate immunity is divinely designed and endowed. And yes, we do have some pretty amazing, amazing disruptions in the force right now. So go easy on each other and let go of anything that's holding you back. Stay benevolent. Um, I will be teaching some spring courses that will be announced on pendulum dousing, on healing foods and medicines, and on the five rights. Uh, remember to go to ditoforyou.com there are the tabs that we've been reading on and much, much more information on healing herbs and tips. Uh, so remember to take care of yourself, stay alkaline, and baking soda is great for that, by the way. We take some in our water every day. And that's it for today. I hope everybody got a little bit of 
wisdom from that. Um, I know that Kukita and I have, we haven't, uh, we've been together for eight years and neither one of us has had a flu or a cold or been sick or even had anything for that period of time. And mine goes back almost 20 years where I have never had the flu or a cold. And I think it's all because of our pH levels and because of the way we look at things. So thank you very much for this time. I am very happy to assist any of you at any time with any questions you might have, uh, either on my email, uh, which is Dito, Dr. Dito, oh, DitoForYou.com, and uh, drdito at gmail.com. So anyway, thank you again. I appreciate your attention and so be it.